Whiskey Gaming, and this is my late review of Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate. I have played it on the PS Vita, but this time around I played it on the PC via Steam. It's also available on the Xbox 360 and PS3 if you still have those lying about. Okay, so let's get into the story. You play as Batman, you know, it's a Batman game. And when it starts out, you are chasing down Catwoman who has just stolen something. And then she gets shipped off to Blackgate. You soon after get a call finding out that something has gone wrong at Blackgate Prison. And well, it turns out that the Black Mask, Penguin, and Joker each have taken over one of these sections of Blackgate. And really, I gotta say, the story is not very strong. You get this vibe of something else going on, and it's really never big enough to, quite frankly, warrant a game of its own. This at best warrants, like, a tie-in comic book. I'm not even joking. But let's get into the audio, which I gotta say, the voiceover work is the same cast from Batman Arkham Origins, and they do a pretty good job. I will say, I felt like the dialogue written for this game was, you know, nowhere near on par what it could have been, or should have been. The music is, you know, Batman music, it works well, it goes with what's going on, it goes with the character you're playing, it's not, you know, anything new. As for the sound effects, they're okay, they're nothing amazing, but that is to be expected. I should point out that this is not like a AAA title, or at least not at the time, the company was not considered AAA. But it works well enough. I don't think it's quite as good as like the full titles, but it works well enough. But let's get into the gameplay mechanics and whatnot. This is one of those 2.5D side-scrolling beat-em-ups. And they do replace the RPG elements you find in the traditional Arkham games with more metroidvania style upgrades and whatnot you have to explore the map you have to find secret areas you get armor upgrades and things that will boost your attack power etc as well as other items that will help you explore new areas now that being said that works all right i'm gonna say first off the upgrading yeah that works well the problem is the other batman games are very much rpgs and you know castlevania is still at its core an rpg so a lot of the random fights you run into in arkham origins blackgate when you're exploring you run into these random fights and they just don't really matter they don't mean anything because you're not going to gain xp to level up which also unfortunately shines a light on the fact that the combat just isn't as good. Which it's not. They do the best they can trying to take that combat system and put it in a 2D viewpoint. But unfortunately you have no control over the enemies you're targeting. So if they're special enemies like bladed enemies, armored enemies, or enemies with the stun rods. You can't necessarily target them so you don't always do the move you need to in order to beat that specific enemy but then it goes beyond that with the stealth predator mode you know when you got a sneaky takedown people it doesn't work as well either because again you just don't have the same options and therefore it's not going to work as well because you know this is a downgraded 2d kind of game so having areas where there's always these four stealth sections isn't beneficial either when you're exploring but also, since you need to be exploring, I gotta say, I don't necessarily love the map. It's not as well laid out as you might like when you're looking at it, trying to figure out where you need to go to. Eventually, you do get their logic, but their logic really sucks ass and how it's represented on the map. And this being the kind of game where you need to explore the map to find upgrades and secrets and yada yada yada, you have to use your detective vision, but now there's like the special scan detective vision, which I remember on the PS Vita, you like touched the screen and moved a little thing around. While playing on this, you do a similar thing. You don't actually touch the screen, but you do scan around. The problem is you have to scan every room like five or six times. You can't just do one sweeping scan. And it eventually just gets to the point where it's tiresome and it begins to feel more like a burden. Not unlike a lot of the combat. Not unlike, you know, the gameplay in general. Which is going to bleed into the fact that the boss fights in this game suck ass. All of them are like, you know, figure out the pattern, but they're really kind of just crap. It, it's disappointing and it really, it really shines a light on how not AAA this game is. But let's get into the controls, which are also not great. They work okay for side-scrolling, but when it comes to the combat, oh man, there are definitely times where it was not reading my inputs, and it was just not working well. 
I would try and block, and it was like, nah, you didn't block. I would try and dodge and jump over somebody, etc. And it was like, no, you didn't do that, and you take a hit, even though you're sitting there like, yes, yes, I double tapped A to do that. So while moving around and grappling and using the devices and whatnot, that is all responsive and that works well, and the scanning is actually very responsive. The combat, there are times where it definitely doesn't read commands that you put in, and therefore it fails at being combat. When a game's not going to do what you need it to do in combat, then it's not doing you any good, is it? Now, lastly, the visuals. As I have pointed out, this is not a AAA game. I will say, when you're running around and exploring, I think they did a good job. I will say the vibe of the prison is good. It definitely fits with, like, the Batman universe where things are dirty and grimy no matter what. And honestly, in the gameplay, the graphics, like I said, they look pretty good. I like the enemy designs. I like the Batman costume as well as the costumes you can unlock. But it's in the cutscenes where it doesn't necessarily entirely fall apart, it's just a little disappointing there because, again, not a AAA game. They didn't do full cutscenes, they went with that comic book hand-drawn style of like, you know, you're basically watching a comic book, I guess is how I would phrase it. And for the most part, it looks good. I just felt like the Joker looked ridiculous because you go from these like hand-drawn cutscenes with the Joker and his design is kind of shit, and then you go back into the gameplay, and it's exactly the Joker from the Arkham Origin game, so you're like, oh, that's weird that they don't match up in their visual style. But like I said, I think they did a good job visually translating it, like, the characters look good. The world they built looks good, the different zones, they did a good job creating different areas. So visually, I'll say I'm actually overall pretty happy with how it looked. I know, obviously, it's not going to look like as amazing as the other games because, you know, this was at one point in time and originally released as a handheld. But let's get to the wrap-up. I gotta say, I remember enjoying this a lot more on the PS Vita, and I think we always kind of lower our expectations for a handheld game. So replaying it on the PC, while I didn't necessarily hate every moment of playing it, I will definitely say I wouldn't recommend it. Like, playing this gives me an even greater appreciation for Origins, which I know I didn't necessarily give the shiningest of reviews, but man, by comparison, it stands out. Okay, so in the comments down below, why don't you tell me which is your favorite out of the three villains in this game, Black Mask, Penguin, or the Joker? As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, and if you like what I'm doing in general, share it and subscribe. Have a good one.